Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about how to create a syllabus or similar document using Quarto. What we're going to do here is look at how to use the Quarto system and the RStudio IDE to generate the document and then we'll push that to GitHub to create an example that you could grab. To begin, I'm assuming that you have already installed Quarto and RStudio. As part of that, you probably also have R installed. If you haven't watched the videos on how to do that and get set up with Quarto and RStudio, please check out my other videos. Assuming you have that set up already, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project in my directory. Now, I already have a directory locally called uh, Quarto and inside of that I'm creating a, a folder called syllabus example So my new project will go in there That's just to help me keep my projects organized and you can set this up however you'd like But I do recommend starting a new project when you do something like this. So for me uh, I'm going to create a new project inside of this directory called syllabus example and that's created as a subdirectory of my github folder so I'll go ahead and begin by creating that new project and the IDE will switch over into that project. And then when that happens, we have some files that are uh, already available to us and we have an introductory set of uh, content here. This is just a, an initial Quarto book. And so if we'd like to, we can render that out. So let's go ahead and do that and just see what it looks like to begin. In the background jobs, you'll see some information as that uh, prepares the book and you'll see in your uh, directory over here you'll see some new folders and files generated and then finally in the browser you'll see the example that's generated so this is just the default book that's populated here but it already has a great amount of content what i would like to do then is modify this file to become our new syllabus and so before we begin with that i want to point you to a good reference here for how to create a working syllabus. If you're not familiar with that, you can maybe look at this, maybe get some ideas from this. This is produced by the Teaching and Learning Lab at MIT, and the page title is Create a Syllabus. And what I'd like to do from here is just take a few ideas that we can then use to populate our own syllabus. So if we jump down, your syllabus at minimum should include basic information about the subject, contact information for instructional staff and office hour time and location, subject description, policies, calendar of assignments and exams, grading criteria, expectations for academic conduct, and mandatory statements. In my mind, what we need to do then is create additional sections in this book, this Quarto book, that will represent those mandatory content items that we saw listed on that MIT page. If we jump back into our studio, uh, let's take a look at what we currently have in our files. So we have a Quarto YML file that's already loaded for us, and we can take a look at that. We have a git ignore file, which is created as part of the, uh, the project, uh, and that's related to GitHub, so you don't have to worry about that right now. There's a cover. Uh, image, there's an index.qmd file, which is the Quarto markdown file. There's an intro.qmd file. There's a references.bib file, references.qmd, summary.qmd. There is our project file, which carries the name of our, our uh, file that we told it to make, so a syllabus example. And then we have uh, a file or a folder called underscore book, and that contains all of the actual rendered book files. Now in that folder we see an index.html, that is the front page for the syllabus in our case. There's an intro, references, and summary.html files, so those are all the, the content files. There is a search.json file that's used for the search function of the page. And then there's some site libraries. So if you look in there, it's really background stuff you don't need to worry about. So that's sort of off limits, if you will, for now. So in our folder, we see these QMD files. These are the ones that we will uh, extend and replicate for our additional content. So if you'd like to leave the preface in there, great. Uh, if you'd like to, you can rename some of this stuff. Uh, the index file we have as our main file. That is what contains the, the preface content currently. 
we can update that. And then the, the Quarto uh, YML file is, in a sense, settings for your document. Uh, so if you look in there, it's formatted in a way that probably is not familiar to you, but it's structured to have some information about the project itself and the type. Currently, it's set up to be a book. And then there are some uh, settings for the book itself, including the title, the author, the date, and then the chapters. So the chapters especially uh, will be will be very important to what we're going to do. This file tells uh, what content you have in your product. And so if you make these, you need to include them in this list here. And that way they show up. So this is kind of a, a director, if you will, of, of the project. Then we have a bibliography and we tell that the references.bib file contains the references. And currently we're using the theme Cosmo. There are some other themes. These are called bootstrap themes. And you can select from a list of those or modify them. So we'll just leave this as the default for now. That's really a topic for another time. And then the document class is really a topic for another time as well. So just leave that alone. And then the editor, you can leave that setting alone too. It allows you to do some visual editing uh, here inside of the IDE. But for us, the main thing that's really important here are these book settings. And we can change the title, and we can even do that now. So we can just call it syllabus. You can put your instructor name here, whatever your name is. And then the date, you can change that to whatever you'd like it to be. And then for now, let's go ahead and leave the structure as is and just go ahead and save that and render this one more time. And we can see that the title has changed to syllabus and then the instructor name has shown up for our author. So that's all great. We're already making changes. So what else can we do? Well, let's take a look at this MIT page once more. We're gonna copy these syllabus items and we'll go into our studio here. And what I'd like to do is, just as a quick list, uh, I'm just gonna paste this. I, you, know, you can do this anywhere. I'm just using the IDE itself here to do this. So uh, just treat this as a working, a working space for a moment. So at this point, we have a list of documents that we want to create. But let's just focus now on creating all of these. So in our folder, we need a new file and we'll make a new Quarto document. And this one we'll call it Course Information. And we'll leave everything else as is and we'll click Create. And this one is not saved yet. So the file itself is not saved. If you look, it renders as a untitled one. So when we save that, it saves as course.qmd in our folder. So what we can do now is continue with the rest of these and get that set up. So when we save those, they'll all appear same way in our list. Those are all now created. They appear in the project folder and you can see they're all loaded in the IDE here for editing. Uh, we also still have our index.qmd, which is sort of the front page. And then we have the Quarto YML file, which is uh, the settings file for this. So at this point, what you can do is think about what you would like to have on your front page. So as I was just using this for a workspace to create those, I can delete that. I might not want this to be called a preface, but I might call it uh, maybe the syllabus introduction, or maybe you want to call it a welcome, something like that. So we can get rid of that, spell it correctly. <laughs> So here you might say something like, welcome to the course, and then whatever you want to type. So we'll leave that there and then just save that. And then as far as the other sections go, uh, currently they're called course information. Maybe we can call that course overview so we can edit the title there. And I'm using the visual editor here. If you'd like, I certainly recommend you jump into the source uh, version of this to do your edits. I find it to be a little bit easier now because this is so simple and it's just text. These almost, you know, they're almost identical here. Um, as far as your contact information goes, I think you might want to have here uh, information about maybe the lead instructor. So we'll just do a second level heading here. Maybe you have some teaching assistance or not, you know, whatever you want to do here. 
and then you could put their contact information here. And then finally, let's take a look at that YML file. Currently, we have index, intro, summary, and references. Now, we don't actually need those because we're not using, uh, at this point, the intro, the summary, or the references. So for now, uh, I'm just going to delete these and then replace them with all of our other titles. And so currently, our chapters in our book are the index, which is the front page, whatever you want that to have. And you should have one called index because it will render out this index.html. Now, I will point out that for the moment, this is rendering as a web page. So you could host it like a normal web page, but we'll also render this out as a PDF. So you can distribute that maybe more easily to your students or save it for them on your faculty website or whatever you have. And then for the bibliography, we actually don't have that anymore. So I'll just delete that for the moment. Uh, this is what we see rendered locally. So we have our welcome that updated and it appears here in the list of chapters. We also have our course overview, contact information, and everything else is as expected. At this point, you're basically done uh, with this. The last thing that I wanna point out to you is how to make a PDF out of this. What we need to do now is make a small modification to our YML file. And what this will do is place a small button on the page, allowing students to download a PDF. Now, this will also, this process I'm showing you, will also allow you to have the PDF itself. But if you do have this as a web page, this is a great feature. So on your book section of the uh, YML file, we're going to add one line. It needs to be indented like the others. And this just provides your download options. And there are several download options you can read about, but we only need one of them called PDF. So just add this line, downloads, there's a colon, space, and then square brackets that contain PDF. That's it for that. So go ahead and save your YML file. And then when you render this web page again, what you see is a very small icon that indicates that a PDF is available. The other thing you need to do is go back to your uh, index page. And then on the IDE, we have this render button, which we've been using to generate the content. What you can do is drop down the little menu next to it and then you'll see the available render PDF option. So click that and your LaTeX system that's installed will render this document twice as needed by LaTeX and then it will produce the uh, PDF file itself. If everything's done, you'll be able to go into your book folder which contains all of your rendered content and you'll see the syllabus.pdf uh, in this and you can grab that and use it however you'd like. I recommend you re-render your page as an HTML file, and then that will also populate this book folder with all of the necessary web content as well. And when that's done, you can go to your web page, and this is all local still, uh, and you'll notice that it has this PDF icon. It's a little small button, uh, at least with this format uh, for the visuals, it appears as a small gray button next to the title and you'll notice that the pop-up already says download PDF. So when you do that, <clears throat> you can download that button or download that file, and then it pops up and it shows you the one that you have stored locally if you rendered it already. And as we can see here, it's a little bit less fancy, but it contains all of that information. The table of contents is already generated. Thank you, LaTeX. And then uh, we have all of our welcome information, the course overview, contact information. These are all separated on different pages already, so that's all nice to go. Uh, page numbers and everything's in place. So relatively simple content and uh, it generates a relatively simple PDF. As you get more complicated, you know, things will change. But at this point you have a functional web page version of your syllabus and the rendered PDF of your syllabus. So thank you for watching. I hope you got something useful out of that. And as educators, I applaud you. Good luck in everything that you do. And maybe this will help the students read the syllabus. Thanks. Have a great week.